morning. We're going to see you at the basketball game tonight. Didn't even know there was a basketball game. <laughs> All right, I guess that answers that. <laughs> um, so, Didn't they have a basketball game last time? Women. Oh, okay. Men's no. Okay. Um, so, uh, first time we've seen you since the game. What were your takeaways after watching the game? You know, I thought our guys throughout the course of the game, you know, kind of stuck to the plan and, and did a good job of executing it. I thought um, Dorian played really well. You know, I think he was 21 or 28 with three legit drops. You know, um, kept kept drives alive with his leg. Uh, you know, I think the unique thing about Dorian is it seems like every game we play, he continues to get better, and it's it's really fun to see him continuing to grow. You know, I think Sean and. Duke are continuing to get better on a weekly basis, and um, uh, I thought we were balanced in terms of running and throwing the, foot, throwing the football. Um, and then I thought on defense, our, our guys did a really nice job. Uh, Chris Barnes was outstanding for us; um, played really well for us. It's a shame that you know his interception we didn't get more out of it. Obviously, we had a you know, blindside block. Um, we got to do a better job on some of those aspects. You know, making sure we understand that you can't do that nowadays. You know, that's a, a new rule. That's an emphasis in college football. Um, but I thought by and large overall we played pretty well as a, as a, as a team and, and you know, I think we're continuing to grow as a group. You mentioned Chris Barnes. He said after the game the defense became more aggressive during the bye week before Stanford. So did that, you, you said that there really wasn't any schematic changes. So is this just a thing that came from the players to, to have a No, like I just think they're executing field? and you can ask Chris, we're making the same calls. I think they're, they're executing those calls and uh, you know, we didn't come in and say, hey, let's put this new defense in and you watch us and we're not playing any defense but just I think our guys are the more they're familiar with it the better they are you know you look at there's a lot of moving parts there's Josh Woods first time an outside linebacker you know, KLS playing outside linebacker but missed the first three games um, you know a lot of different guys moving around in there um, Carl Jones getting first significant snaps inside Lange is a guy that's done a really nice job for us but has played inside has played outside you know kind of settled down at an, as, as the inside linebacker spot now that we got KLS back uh, Jason Harris is doing a really nice job complimenting KLS and, and complimenting Josh and adding some depth to that position. Um, I think uh, Darnay's healthier, so I think we're playing a little bit better in the back end. Um, I think Stephen Blaylock has really grown as the season's gone along to safety, so well, that's really what I think will be them cutting loose. You know, and that's what we talk about. You know, let's play fast, let's play loose. And, Let's just go play football, and I think that's what they're doing. What, what about guys tighter to the line of scrimmage? It does seem like maybe you're having guys, more guys huh? close tighter to the line of scrimmage on defense. The same, same? Yeah, same calls, same okay. stuff we've done all along. We haven't been able to add it to the package. Going back to having reviewed the, the game film now, you guys shut Chenault down. I mean, he only had three catches the entire game. What, what do you credit that to defensively? Um, I think our guys had a good scheme, but I also don't think he's 100% healthy, you know, when you watch him run around. And I saw him, you know, you watch him in the Wildcat package and some of the things, I don't think he's as explosive as he was before. I know he's dealing with some issues. I think it's an abdomen or something that can slow you down a little bit. But um, I think we did some, a decent job of doubling him at times. Um, we also did a decent job when he was off one-on-one. -on -one. I thought Darnay did a good job when he was off one-on-one. -on -one, I'm not sure he's 100% healthy either, so um, he's a talented, talented football player. So I, I lost count of the number of Twitter booms that Ethan Young has unleashed in the last <coughs> week or so. Has your, has your recruiting picked up pretty nicely here this last uh, No, I just think so? it's, we had a recruiting weekend, so you know, that's, that's part of it. You know, when you're away, you don't have recruiting weekends, so we're limited really in how many recruiting weekends we can have because we don't bring kids in um, early in the season because there's no students on campus, so it's not a fair representation of what being a student athlete at UCLA is about. Um, some schools do do that, we choose not to, because uh, I want them to experience what it's like when students are on campus, I want them to experience meeting professors and things like that. So when you look at how many times we've had students on campus, um, school back in session, and the ability to have recruiting weekends, this was uh, this one matched up for us. We had one the week before, and then we had this one. Those were our first two recruiting weekends of the course. What about the role of three consecutive wins in that uh, getting, getting high commitment, high end commitments in the wake of a three game win streak? Like you don't think positive. that plays any role? I think it's positive, and we'll continue to see how that rolls. So, no, I don't think, I don't think, and I would be very presumptuous to be so shallow that recruits that's all they commit to. So, you know, there's a lot more to sell at this university than just that we won a couple of football games in a row. I think this is a truly unique and special place, and I think when you get a chance to spend 48 hours on it, you realize that. I know you're generally not going to look at individual accomplishments in the middle of the regular season, 
but were you aware yesterday that uh, Josh Kelly was named a finalist for the Burlesworth Award? I did not see that. So. And do you know you know of the awards for, yeah, some, for the someone who was award. a walk-on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was named a great, finalist last year. Great distinction for Josh, and, and very well deserved. I mean, he's epitomizes <clears throat> everything you want in a student athlete, and the more recognition he gets, is all deserving on Josh's part. Um, I, I only noticed this at really the last game, but you brought the victory bell back to the Rose Bowl. Has that been a recent? Has that been all year long? I have not. It's been all year long? Okay, I don't have anything to do with it. Okay. Uh, the least of my worries is, <laughs> is, is, is on game day where it's the victory bell. That's got nothing to do with football. With a short week, clinic administration. with a short week this week, a short week of practice, what, what do you focus on since you improvement? You know, it's the same thing that we always do. We always talk about it, not a bye week, but an improvement week. How do we get better? They had a really good lifting and running session yesterday, and we'll get out on the field and, and work today. You know, good versus good, ones versus ones, twos versus twos, threes versus threes, just like we did the, the two practices, uh, training sessions we had, and we were getting ready for uh, Stanford the following week. So. Um, today and Friday will be that'll be our emphasis. You know, there's nothing from a game plan standpoint that um, we're doing. You know, our coaches were all on the road yesterday, so um, recruitment at high school practices, and most of them are back today. Um, then we'll go back out again tomorrow, and then we'll be back for Friday's training session. So it's really, it's just getting better. And we we got so many different things we got to get better at. That, you know, that's what we'll continue to emphasize from offense, defense, special teams, to all of it. So. Have it's, you done anything in Utah yet? As a coaching staff? We always have watched tape, but we have not met as a staff, and our guys have been in and out, so have not met as a staff and started to formulate a game plan in terms of this is how we're going to try to attack them, and this is how we feel they're going to try to attack us, but from that standpoint. When does that begin? Um, over the weekend, like we normally do. Uh, football Calvert and uh, Flint Lake, is there any update on those guys? Nope. Okay. And then you mentioned... Uh, things that you can improve on what are what are some of those things everything fundamentals hand placement on blocks you know ability to bend and sustain blocks you know finish them at the at, at the at the point of attack on the offensive side of the ball catching the football you know the fundamentals of catching the ball and going back to those base things um holding on to the ball uh ball security is always a paramount you know the mesh and what the quarterback's working on in handoffs exchanges you know on the defensive side of the ball it always starts with tackling um, you know, we have tackled better in recent games, but that doesn't mean we continue to not work on that. You know, we need to always work on those fundamentals. Um, getting off of blocks, you know, once we've engaged with the diff with the, with the offensive player, um, making sure we see our second key and then get off the block and remember the football. So there's, there's a ton of fundamentals that have to be uh, continued to work on. And it's really a daily basis from that standpoint. It seems like some of the uh, pre-snap shifts on the defensive line are, are uh, allowing the players to get into the backfield uh, a little bit more. Um, what are you, are you, do you do you attribute it, attribute that to execution? Yeah, and I think you know I think our guys have a better understanding of our scheme and where we're headed and where they need to be at, at what point in times during the snap. So um, you know, as as those young guys grow that are getting significant playing time for us now. Um, I think that they're they're starting to get a real good feel of how all the pieces fit from the D line to the second level to the third level, you know, and how each of them have an have an impact on the success uh, or lack of success that a, an offense can have on that down. So, you know, how they're all they they're all paramount. You know, and if one guy isn't where he's supposed to be when he's supposed to be there, then that's usually when you give up a big play. So. Is is having Oduo Isabor in there uh, a little bit more? Is that helping out with the? It has, you know, his his athleticism has helped, but I think we've played some teams that have spread you out. So, you know, as we talked about earlier, we're trying to match their personnel, which everybody does. It happens in the NFL. It happens in college. Is that, um, you know, as as they get smaller offensively, um, you get smaller defensively. They're trying to get you. Uh, in space, and, and the, the better athletic you are in space, the, the better off you have an, an opportunity to make plays. So, you know, they didn't run a ton of 12 and 11 and 12 personnel. They were they were spread out a little bit, so then we had to be spread out a little bit. So, but I think we've got a pretty decent D line rotation, and we've got some injuries there, obviously. But you know, I think with um, Vince is doing a really good job, kind of rotating, keeping those guys fresh. Going back to Curry for one second, how happy are you with where it is right now? And how much uh, do you feel like you need to room, you need to uh, cover before you get to signing day? I don't think you're ever happy until the signing day. You, know, you have no idea. And just because the kid's committed now doesn't mean that he's locked and committed. So we need to continue to recruit the kids that are committed, and um, we need to continue to fill out what we're looking for in, in, the, in the rest of this class. So you, know, you won't be uh, 
done until whenever that first date is in December 18th or whatever that number is and, and, and December in that first signing period and then kind of see where you are at that point in time and then um, figure it out. But I, I also know in this day and age, um, you, you don't want to sign a full class because you're not sure what opens up after that. So, um, you know, we've got some players that, you know, um, Jason Harris is a kid that we got late that was, has, has made an impact on us. So, you know, you're, you're always going to try to try to manage that game and see how that is. But you're never, it's, recruiting's never over. It's a 24-7 cycle that will continue ad infinitum. So. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Thanks,